Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Blessings, blessings be upon your life. We thank God for um, another uh, empowerment Bible study as we come to be empowered um, through and by the word of God. And um, I'm just thankful for all that God has done and all that God is going to do. Um, we're going in a different direction um, as we transition into a new season and into a new time. I pray that you have enjoyed um, our discipleship training um, in the months that, in the time that we spent in, um, in our manual. Um, but as I spent time in prayer and following um, the leading of the Holy Spirit, um, we're going to um, just uh, at this present time, just not necessarily dis discontinue, but uh, we're just going to go a different direction. What the Lord has uh, put in my spirit is that it, it's time for us to discern the times, to discern the times. Um, and so the Lord has uh, prompted me. I was planning to um, start the book of Revelations in the month of September. But as I um, prayed and sought the face of God, um, and he moved me in a different direction to discontinue, I guess I could say, the, the uh, discipleship training and to go right into the book of Revelations. He wants us to discern the times. And, and this time, from the first time I did it, which was about a year and a half ago, um, the Lord was, uh, was dealing with me about Matthew, the 24th chapter. And he wanted me, which I did for a good six months, I believe, close to six months, I was teaching out of the book of Revelations from January to about May, uh, close to June, I believe. I was um, teaching from the book of Revelations. He wanted us to know what was to come. In the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, when Jesus speaks to the, to the apostles or to the disciples, he, you know, they ask the question, how will we know um, the signs of the time? How will we know the end is near? So on and so forth. And Jesus begins to go into breaking it down. And then the Lord said, after I read Matthew chapter 24, he um, led me to go into um, Revelations and how they corresponded um, together. But this time, the Lord has prompted me to go back into the book of Revelations, and this time to discern the times, um, discern the times that we are in, that God is calling us as born-again believers through the Holy Spirit to discern the times, that we um, have a gift of discernment. Um, we should be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is leading us. And I'm really encouraging the body of Christ um, to really stay in a place of consecration, um, which positions you uh, to hear from God, positions you um, to see the things that God wants you to see. We are in a unique time because a lot of people have thought that this uh, COVID virus would be done um, a month ago or two months ago. But we actually see um, that it is still here. And so we must discern the times. God, what do you say? Now, even though this virus is still, as we can say, lingering um, on, um, that does not stop the work of the Lord. Let me, let me encourage you because of th this is a season of, of still birthing ministry. A lot of you, God has called you to do a work. And, you know, and don't allow this time of the pandemic or this COVID virus to stop you from doing the work that God has called you to do. No, I encourage you um, to be obedient in this time. Whatever God is calling you to do or leading you to do or put on your heart to do, um, I am, I'm encouraging you to go forth in it. Um, don't second guess it in this season. Um, God is trying to speak to you in a clear way than he spoke to you ever before so you'll know the signs of the times and that it's time for you to go forth. And I'm really encouraging the body to stay consecrated, like I said, which positions you to hear from God and follow the leading of God. Okay, very, very important times because the reality of it is we don't know when this virus is going to, um, as I don't want to use to say, magically disappear or we don't know when this virus is just going to fade out. But we must continue to do what God told us to do. And I know, you know, a lot of born-again believers are kind of hesitant um, of, of stepping out of faith and doing some of the work that God has called you to do or some of you have scaled back a whole lot um, and, and, and I definitely get it but this in this time is really trusting in God 
and, 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 and walking by faith. And um, so as an encouragement, uh, follow the leading of the Lord and, and, and stay consecrated. Stay consecrated. That means continue to, to fast and pray throughout the week. We shouldn't have to do a corporate fast um, as a church for you to um, fast. No, as born-again believers, that should be part of your worship. That should be part of your lifestyle, that you should spend time throughout every day. You know, fast. You, you can really fast every day. You could take two, three hours out of the day and fast and really just spend time with the Lord with, without eating and in, in, even if you could do it without drinking water, whatever the case is, get away from the TV, social media, whatever it takes. But this is a time that we have to stay consecrated in our new season. You know, whenever you come into a new season, there is instructions. You know, God gave Joshua instructions. God gave Moses instructions. So we see God gave the apostles instructions. So we see the consistency throughout the Bible um, of whenever it was a new season or a new time, instructions was given um, in that time. So we're going to deal with um, on this afternoon in the book of Revelations, um, we're going to look at chapters 1 and 4, depending upon how the Lord leads us and, and, and um, how this goes. Um, hopefully we can get to chapter 4, but I'm, you know, I'm going to really take my time. And, and what the Lord wants us to do as we go through each chapter, as we go through each chapter, he wants us to um, be in prayer and beginning to discern, Lord, what things have been fulfilled, what things will be fulfilled. Um, he wants us to be very prayerful and discerning of the times and, and, and as we go through the scriptures of knowing what's been fulfilled, what is about to be fulfilled or what's to come. He wants us to be very discerning this time as we go through the scriptures. Now, as always, I say that my, uh, my two devices are turned the opposite way, so I won't be able to see your questions. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I will um, answer those questions after our study. Um, I really encourage you. Uh, we are practicing social distancing, so I really encourage our church is really big enough um, for those of you that may want to come in um, and fellowship. Um, if you desire to wear your mask, we definitely encourage you because of, of things that are in place. But we have enough room in the house of God to social distance. And so um, it could make it much easier for you if you have questions um, concerning our study on these next few months, which is going to be in the book of Revelations. So we're going to go um, to chapter 1 um, in, in the book of Revelations. Um, as Revelations, I'm going to open up with prayer for I continue on. Father in heaven, we just come to you right now. We thank you, Lord God, for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for the things that you've said, things that you're going to say, things that you're going to reveal. Father God, on this afternoon, we pray that you give us all the ear to hear what you have to say. Help us, Father God, through the Holy Spirit to discern the times. We pray, Father God, that we get fresh revelation through the book of Revelation, Father God, and helping us to understand what things have been fulfilled and what things will be fulfilled and what things are to come. Open our eyes and our ears, Father God, that we will not be deceived or lost in these last hours, Father God, but we'll be open to the truth, Father God. We'll be able to see the very things that you're trying to show us, Father God, um, for you, for the word of God even says you know, that the very elect will fall away, Father God. And, and I myself, and, and I'm even praying for those who are watching, who will be watching, and those who are here, that we will not be one of those who fall away, Father God. Help us to stand firm on your word, Father God. Help us to continue to trust in you regardless of what's going on around us, that we will hold true to you and to your word, Father God. Many things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we get into the book of Revelations, um, we have a couple different um, interpretations of apocalypse and apocalypse. And either one is dealing with unveiling, which is not covering, or unveiling um, the truth. Things are not covering truth. Things are going to be revealed. And this is dealing with the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Now, we have to understand that our, our Messiah, our Savior, is from Genesis all through Revelations, as even in the Old Testament. Um, we've seen our Savior appear at different times, and then we've seen our Savior in the New Testament appear um, in flesh. Um, and, and we'll get into a lot of this. Um, but this is the ap apocalypse and apocalypse. And so it's unveiling. That's what Revelation is. It's unveiling Jesus Christ. Unveiling, not covering the truth. 
um, God wants to speak and reveal truth to us. Um, it kind of reminds me of even when Moses had a veil on his face, he came down from the mountain after spending time with the Lord. He had a veil on his face, and that's because after he spent time with the Lord, the glory of the Lord was on his face, and, 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 and the, the children of Israel was afraid. And so what he would do is after he spent time with the Father, um, he had put a veil on his face until the glory of God uh, was no longer on his face. Um, but it kind of reminds me of that. But in, in, in Revelation, we see things unveiling. So it's not a veil. This, uh, this veil is now being removed so we can see the truth. So we're going to go scripture by scripture. Um, and we're going to try to break down these scriptures um, to the best as, of my ability as the Holy Spirit is leading me to. If I do not touch on something, best believe I will be going back into chapters 1 and chapter 4. Um, just to make sure that I have brought out every point I can possibly bring out um, in uh, chapter 1 and chapter 4. Here it is here in uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The unveiling of Jesus Christ which God gave to him to show his servants. So God gave to his son Jesus to show his servants, his servants, um, John in particular because he is the writer of revelations to us that are born again and um, also to um, as, as chapter 2 verse chapter 2 and verse 3 deals with the seven churches so all those who are born again we are the servants of the Lord but he gave this to us um, to reveal to unveil truth to us it says things which must soon take place so this is what God is speaking to us right now and saying that things that are soon to take place or already has taken place God wants us to see the things that have already taken place and that are soon to take place this time, okay? He wants us to know what's going on, all right? He says, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. So he sent or he signified. He communicate through symbols. What, what we're going to find out through the book of Revelations, which I even talked about the first time that I taught it, um, you're going to see a lot of comparisons. You're going to see a lot of things that it was like this or his feet was like this. And so you have to get the understanding of what uh, whatever his feet was like. You have to get the understanding of what that means. Um, so um, you're going to see a lot of uh, similes or metaphors throughout the book of Revelation that's unveiling truth. Okay, But we have to get the understanding of what's being unveiled or what's being uncovered. All right. Um, so it says, signified by his angel to his servant John. So this message, because John is the writer, he, th this is given to John. Um, and he is to write, which we'll run into the scripture in a few minutes. John is to write as he sees. As he hears and he sees, he begins to write. This really coincides with uh, the gospel of John, because John's gospel is really unique compared to all the other, gospel, the other three gospels. It's because John wrote um, as he saw that's why it says, in the beginning was the word. So he was getting a revelation then of who Jesus was, and he wrote as he saw. Okay, That's what makes John's gospel so unique. He wrote as he saw. And so even in the book of Revelation and the things he sees and hears, John writes. All right. He said, who bears record or who testifies of the word of God? We should always testify of the word of God. Okay, everything that God has done for us through his word, we should testify, we should bear record. We should let people know what God has done in our life. Uh, it says, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, the testimony, what, what Christ did on the cross for us, how he shed his blood, how he went through all that he went through. This is part of our testimony. And it says, of all the things that he saw, which I just explained. Verse 3 says, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. So let's pay attention to that. It says, blessed, that you are blessed, he who reads. A lot of born-again believers are afraid or fearful of reading the book of Revelations. No need to be afraid because of you being born again. The Bible says clearly that you are blessed because you read it. Listen, if you are born again, I don't care if you got saved just a few minutes ago to you got saved 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Listen, you are blessed when you read the book of Revelations because there is blessings, there is an inheritance that's for us. 
Now, those who are not saved and those of you who don't believe and all that, guess what? The book of Revelation is not going to sound too good for you as you read it. It's only for those who have repented. It's only for those who have accepted Christ that, listen, Revelation is not a bad book at all. But it says, blessed is he who reads it and those who hear. So not only just reading it, but have an open ear to what God is trying to reveal to you, what he's speaking to you. Now, listen, if you've never heard God speak to you um, um, before, listen, God speaks to you through his word. Okay, some of you, you know, I, I hear God as clearly as I'm talking, I hear God speak to me that way. That's just the relationship I have. That's just the gifting I have. But you may not have that same experience, but that does not mean that God can't speak to you. And so God can speak to you through his word. I just want to encourage you that the more you read his word and the more you believe his word, the more God will speak to you through his word. So just because you can't hear him as I hear him, listen, you can still hear him because he speaks to us. His word is alive. His word is not dead. This is what God breathed. God breathed his word. He spoke his word. So it says, blessed if you read it, blessed if you hear it, the words of this prophecy, things that's going to be foretold, and what keep those things which are written. You got to hold on to it. You know, keep the word of God. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You got to not keep that word just to avoid sin, but keep that word which keeps the word which keeps us close to God. Okay, keeps us close to God. This is in it for the time is near. The time is near. We are in that time that is near. The rapture or um, our Savior coming back for us can come at any time. He can come at any time. He can come while I'm teaching. He can come a week later. We don't know. But we need to discern the times and be ready. I don't want you to not be ready. Okay? And so my assignment is to make sure not only are that you're using your gift to build the kingdom, not only am I edifying you, um, building you up in the faith, but also to help you discern the times. Okay, help you to discern the times. Now it says, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now we won't go into chapter 2 and chapter 3, but we are going to go through chapter 1, um, at maybe at some later time, or as we go through the book of Revelations. Some scripture may refer back to the seven churches, and yes, we will try to touch on them then. Um, but we won't go um, to the chapter 2 and chapter 3 right now. It says, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. So right here we see the trinity. We see the Trinity. How do we see the Trinity? It says right here, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. This is talking about God the Father. All right? He who is, who was, and who is to come. Then it says the seven spirits who are before his throne. The seven spirits um, deals with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then also we see right here, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness. All right? The firstborn from the dead. Jesus is the resurrection. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the one that conquered death. He conquered the grave. And the rulers of the kings of the earth. All power is given to him in heaven and earth. All right? This was given to him when he conquered death in the grave. When he conquered Satan, he took the keys out of Satan's hand. All power was given to him. It's to him who loved us. And what washed us from our sins in his own blood. He loved us. Even before we loved ourselves. Even before we knew who we were. He yet loved us. Even when we were in a thought. He yet loved us. And it says he washed us from all of our sins. The blood that he shed on Calvary. And it says and he had made us. Watch this. Kings and priests. This is part of our identity as believers. We are kings and we are priests. To the women of God, you are queens and you are priests. Okay, we're still priests. Regardless of if you're a male, female, you're still priests. Why do we say you're still priests? Because you have the right to go to the throne of grace, boldly before the throne of grace. You have the right to go to God. Okay, the high priest, which I always talk about in the Old Testament, had to go for us. 
But now, because of what Christ did on the cross, we can now go to God for ourselves. All right? So we are kings and priests. We are royalty, and we are part of the priesthood. It says, to him, his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion and forever. It says, look, verse 7, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. So it says, look, he is coming with the clouds. Now, as I study, some will say that this was the saints, but the clouds also represents majesty. It also represents his glory. Um, when, when he comes back, he's coming back to judge. Now, we talked about our Savior. The first time he came, he came riding on a donkey. And whenever a king rides on a donkey, he's coming in peace. But the next time our Savior comes, he's coming back for battle. He's coming back for war. He's coming back for his people. So it says he's coming with a cloud. He's coming to judge. He's coming in royalty. And all of his majesty is that everyone will see him. Okay? Everyone will see him. It's even those who pierced him, talking about the Jews. The Jews that pierced him. All right? They will see him. All right? And, and it's going to be a terrible time if you're not in Christ when our Savior comes back. It's going to be a terrible time for those who are the unbeliever. But it's going to be a glorious time. For us that are in Christ. This is the reason why the believer should not be worried. Because if I am in Christ. And I'm doing the things that God has called me to do. I'm living according to his word. And I'm walking by faith. And I'm being obedient. Listen there is no need to worry. Okay I want to comfort your hearts. Even though we're discerning the times. I want to comfort your hearts. Um, it says all the tribes of the earth. All the tribes. All the other nations. Mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. So when he comes back, this is all that's going to take place. He says right here in verse 8, he says, I am the Alpha, I am the beginning and the end. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Okay? And so these are the words that Jesus spoke. He is yet coming back for us, for his people. Um, let us continue. It says here in verse 9. Kind of trying to flow with my notes, but I'm just flowing as God gives it to me. Um, it says, verse 9, I, John, both of your brother and companion of the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the isles that is called Patmos on the account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he was exiled. John was exiled. Because of his faith in Christ, because of his belief in Christ. He was exiled, he was excommunicated, however you want to put it. Um, but he was on the Isles of Patmos, and when he gets, he gets on this island, he, he has an encounter with God, has a revelation. God begins to unveil things to, to John while he's on this island. And that also encourages us as we draw closer to God. God will unveil and reveal things to us. He will reveal the end times to us. As he revealed it to John... He, the Bible says he won't withhold any good thing from you. So revealing the end times and revealing things to come, God won't withhold these good things from us. He will allow us to discern and to know so we can get our house in order. Okay? Remember, he's coming back for this, this temple, not this natural temple. He's coming back for this, this temple where the Holy Spirit lives within. So he, he's giving us an opportunity to get your house in order. Okay? He's giving you an opportunity to, to, to get your children in order Get your spouse in order. Get your cousin in order. He's giving you an opportunity to minister to them, to pray for them, to encourage them, to get themselves in order. Because no man knows the day nor the hour that he may appear. Verse 10 says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice like a trumpet. So he was in the spirit. So he has a, he, he I guess the, the easiest way, Apostle Paul had a similar situation where he, and then Paul said, you know, I don't know if I was in my body or out of my body, but I had an encounter, I had an experience. And so here is John having something very similar to what John was talking, to Apostle Paul was talking about. Um, this could be very well an out of body experience and, and the things that he is seeing. Okay. But it, it clearly tells on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice like a trumpet 
saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, this is what I talked about, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. And it talks about these seven churches. So it says, what you see, the things I'm going to reveal to you, it says, write these things. Verse 12 says, and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and when I turned, I, I seen, or I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one was like the Son of Man, which this is our Messiah. He was clothed with a garment to the feet, and with a gold sash wrap around his chest. Now, the gold sash wrap around his chest um, is one, usually one of rank, or a king will wear that type of sash, okay? So our Savior being the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he is about royalty. Once again, as we start to get into these similes, these metaphors, um, it says, verse 14, the hair on his head was white like wool and white as snow. So it was like wool and it was like snow. Okay, so what does like wool and like snow? It deals with purity. All right, it deals with eternity. It deals deals with majesty. That's what white deals with. So we're we're seeing right here. This is not something you take literally because it was like this. What he saw was something like. All right, a lot of people try to give this as the description of Jesus. All right, which it is, but it's we're looking at getting an understanding of what. John saw and what things were like. It says his eyes were like a flame of fire. Okay? Now, in my studying, and, and there's probably other things that you will find also, it deals with the knowledge of the secret in the heart. Um, and I think that lines up with that when you look into somebody's heart, you can see their soul, they talk about. You can see what's really going on with them. And so Jesus' um, uh, eyes being as a... Um, as a flame of fire. We know God is a consuming fire. He consumes everything that's not like him. Okay. So these are the things that it is like. It's so verse 15 says, and his feet was like fine brass, as if he refined in a furnace. Now we have a lot of scripture that talks about being tried by the fire. You know, we are like gold being tried by the fire. And we also see this in Daniel, the 10th chapter, verse 6. But his fine brass or refined as fire. His feet was dealing with the firmness, okay, the firmness of his feet. Then it says here, and his voice as the sound of many waters, okay. When he spoke, it sounded like many waters. And this deal is dealing with the power of his words, that when he spoke, he spoke with power. He spoke with authority. So how that that yet aligns to us, us that are in Christ. We must speak with authority. We must speak with power. Okay? Just as Jesus went, as they give this description of his feet and him going through the fiery furnace, we also go through the fiery furnace. Okay? And God refines us. And he, and he firms us in him. All right? So all these things still correlate to us as believers. Then it says, verse 16, And he had in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His appearance was like the sun, was like the sun of shining brightly. So we know here it says, And in his hand was, in his right hand was the seven stars. And it's dealing with the sword of the Lord. And out of his mouth was a two sharp a sharp two-edged sword and his appearance like the sun shining brightly. And, and that's also dealing with uh, uh, what's that? Hebrews 4 and 12. Um, his word being like a sharp two-edged sword. So we're just going through the things that John is saying and we're going to talk about these seven stars which are the seven angels or the seven pastors or the seven ministers. So this is what he says, in his right hand, he had these seven stars, and out of his mouth went the two-edged sword. So he had a word for these pastors. These seven stars were the pastors or the ministers of the seven churches. And so 
he has a word for them. Now, like I said, we're not going to get into chapter 2 and 3 as he gives a different word um, for the seven churches. Verse 17 says, when I saw him, this is John, I felt at his feet as though I were dead. Then he laid his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives though I was dead. Look, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. And so we, when we talk about Jesus was humanity, Christ was spirit. So Jesus did not go into Hades. Christ, spirit, went into Hades. So Jesus died. Jesus' body is what laid in the tomb. And the Bible talks about the same spirit that yet resurrected Jesus, yet resurrected us when we believed. So it was Christ. It was spirit that resurrected him. And he's letting us know that he lives, he lives forever, forevermore. So if Christ lives forever more than we also that are in Christ we live forevermore verse and he says I have the keys of Hades so Christ went into Hades and took the keys off of Satan that's why all power is given to um, our Savior in heaven and earth that's why death and hell no longer um, no need for us to be afraid to die because um, we are in Christ and he has the keys. So death cannot hurt us. Verse 19 says, Write the things which you have seen and the things which you are and the things which will take place after. This is what God is calling us to do, to discern the times. He's telling John, he says, Write the things that you have seen. The things that John has seen, he's writing them for us, his servants. Then he says, And the things which are, things are current. And he says, and things which will take place after this. So, John, I want you to write all this. So when my servants, which we, that goes all the way back, this is the purpose of him writing it. When my servants read this, they will be able to discern the times. All right? You have to be able to discern the times. So this is not a time that we draw away from God. This is a time that we embrace God and we say, Lord, show me. Show me. What is the truth? What is, what's going on in these times? I preached on Sunday about, you know, what's in your roots. What, and, and we talk about the roots, and, and when we talk about the roots of a plant or a tree, they soak in water or the nutrients. But if what these roots are soaking in is, is contaminated, it's going to contaminate the roots. It's going to contaminate the tree. So God is saying, listen, watch what you're soaking in right now. That was a whole, theory, that was a whole point in the message that if you are a tree, you got to watch what you're soaking in. Because some of you are soaking in some things that will contaminate you. And, and even as I study that, and I don't mean to go back into the text, but even as I study that, if anything that contaminates through the roots contaminates the tree, then any fruit on the tree will be contaminated. And anybody that eats from your tree will be contaminated. And then eventually, if, if, if the contamination continues, that tree will die. And that tree, whoever eats from that tree could die. Because you're contaminated with through the roots. So if you have fear that comes through your roots, if you have doubt that comes through your roots, whatever you got to watch what you are soaking in. You got to watch what you're soaking in because you can soak up some things that will contaminate you. If you stuck with CNN and, and ABC News and all this stuff, if you don't watch, you will, you will soak in the wrong information and you will be contaminated. Because why? How do you know you're going to be contaminated? Because you're going to be fearful. You'd be so worried about the, you know, what's going to happen next. And God is saying, listen, you need to be tuned into what I'm trying to tell you. But if you're contaminated, you can't be tuned into what God is trying to tell you. Right. So we are in times where you have to discern. Don't let the stuff that you're hearing on the news, the stuff you're seeing on Facebook and all these, don't let that stuff contaminate you. You can do all the research you want to do. Now, research you're looking up could contaminate you. Because if it brings fear on you, then that wasn't of God. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right. But if you have the Holy Ghost, you will be able to discern that. If I'm feeling fearful right now because I just researched some information, this is not of God. Right. But if, you, if you're not discerning, then you're going to fall right into that trap. So I'm here to help you to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of the enemy. Even though he's on borrowed time, even though he's defeated, that doesn't mean that he's not still working. 
He's working on borrowed time. And he wants to make sure that you don't uh, reap your inheritance. All right, verse 19 says, Write these things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels or the pastors or the ministers of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which you saw were the seven churches. And so, as I said, we're not going to go through chapters 2 and 3 that deals with um, the word of the Lord um, that went forth um, about these seven churches. He had a message for each church. So we're not going to get into that right now, but as the Lord leads us, we will get back into that. I want to go to chapter 4. Um, chapter 4 deals with the things to come. When, chapter, when we get to chapter 4, after he gives his, his, his message to the seven churches, it begins to unveil the things that are to come. All right? And so as I'm praying and as I'm studying and as I'm getting understanding of these, each of these scriptures, um, and, and listen, when you study the book of Revelation, there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be thrown at you. Um, I can't write it all down. So I, I may talk about some things that um, you may not know. Uh, I may talk about some things you do know. You may find some other things in your studying, um, but it talks about the things to come. So these are the times where, from chapter 4 and on, God wants us to be prayerful and really start to discern, like, Lord, really reveal to me what's going on in your work. What, what has came to pass? You know, what seal? What seal are we on? This, these are things I'm praying about right now. What seals have been broken? What things have been fulfilled? What things are about to be fulfilled? These are the times that we're in, people of God. These are the times that we're in. All right? So that's why you have to draw closer to God. But it says, after this, after this is those, uh, when the Lord when, uh, spoke to the seven churches, he says, after this I looked. And he says, and there was an open door in heaven. So the open door thinks that something is about to be unveiled. Something is about to be revealed in heaven. He says, the, voice, the first voice I heard was like a trumpet, which we say in chapter 1, speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Now, when he tells him to come up here, he is going to the third heaven. You're going to find out why it's the third heaven, because that's where our Savior resides. We got three heavens. We got the heaven when you go outside and look. Then we got the second heaven where Satan's dominion is, or his kingdom. And then we got the third heaven. All right? And there is scripture to back up um, as far as Satan be the prince of the air. So we don't see him in the first heaven, but he's in the second heaven. All right? And even That kind of reminds me of even Daniel when Daniel prayed and he was fasting. And he was wondering why he didn't get the word because there was a war going on between the second and the third heaven. Okay? So we, we're going to get to all this, but he's telling him to come up here. This is what even Apostle Paul experienced. Um, he experienced a third heaven. And after he experienced being in the third heaven, it ended up being a thorn in his flesh, where a messenger of Satan was to buffet him, all right, after he had his encounter. He says, I will show you these things which must take place after this. Here he is, he's unveiling. He says, immediately I was in the spirit, okay? Now, if he's immediately he was in the spirit, that means he's having an out-of-body experience. Now, I have not personally had one. But I'm praying one day I will. But John is having, he's out of, for him to be on the third heaven, he's not in flesh and blood. He's having an out-of-body experience. Okay, God is yet revealing some things to him. He said, and there was a throne set in heaven. This is how you know it's the third heaven, because this is where, our, this is where God resides. He says, a throne set in heaven with one sitting on the throne. He says, and he who sat there appeared like Jasper. And Sardius stone. And there was a rainbow around the throne appearing like emerald. Then it says, verse 4, the 24 thrones were round about. Or the 24 elders is what we're going to get into. And it says, and I saw 24 elders sitting on the throne clothed in white garments. Now, there's a lot of things that the 12 um, elders refer to. Um, you will read in... In Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 9 and 26, talk about the courtroom of heaven. Okay? Um, and, and, and these 24 elders, which 
um, signifies the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. We know it's the 12 apostles because if you read when you get time, Matthew 19 and 28, um, Jesus talks to um, Peter and he talks about the 12 apostles, that they will be with him. Um, these 12, um, these 24 elders, not only is it just dealing with the courtroom of heaven, um, but we also see them in their white robes. They're, they're glorified people. They're glorified, um, yes, I would just say that, glorified uh, servants of the Lord. And it says here, verse 20, yes, yeah, sitting on the thrones, clothed with white garments, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. All right, and we know that we will receive a crown. All right, for... For those who are in Christ, we will receive a crown. So this is the reason why, as I open up, that the book of Revelation is for the, us as believers, that this is going to be a glorious time for us. And it says, lightning and thunder and voices proceeded from the throne. This, they kind of refer back to the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, verse 16. But some of these verses, um, I will go back to at a later time, but even when Moses, and, and he, had, he was um, get, receiving the Ten Commandments, these very things happened, the lightning and the thunder, the voice, uh, and the voices that he heard was the voice of the Lord, showing the, the power and the radiance of, of our Lord and Savior, or, or God. Um, and so this is what this was dealing with. The same thing that happened in, in uh, Moses' time is the same thing that's happening right now as God begins to speak. It says, and then seven lamps of fire was burning before the throne, which are the seven uh, spirits of God. And the seven lamps and the seven spirits is dealing with, well, seven lamps is dealing with complete illumination, brightness. Okay, we know seven means complete, so it was total illumination, total brightness. Okay, and then also it deals with, um, the seven spirits deals with the Holy Spirit, which we talked about in chapter 1. The seven lamps were also in the book of Exodus the 27th chapter verse 20 it talks about the seven lamps of the tabernacle. All right, and So we'll touch more on this probably next week. Um, just want to uh, just lay some groundwork on um, this afternoon. Where are we at in time? We're good on time. But this is what the seven lamps the seven spirits of God which is dealing with the Holy Spirit. It says, before the throne was like a glass-like crystal. So we see the pureness right before us. The sea of glass was like crystal. The clearness, the pureness of it, the purity of it. It says, in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures or um, living beings covered with eyes in the front and in the back. Okay, so these... Um, there's a term that's been very popular, and I just became, I've heard of it, but I just became somewhat really hip to it, and we call it, we use hybrids. And these four beings um, were animal and man. Jesus is a hybrid. How you say Jesus is a hybrid? Because he was 100% God, and he was 100% man. Okay, so this this popular term, hybrids, don't, nothing to be alarmed about, Um but these are four hybrids because it was 100% um, animal, which we see the lion. These living creatures, um, we see, which we got the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. So we're, let's, let's go through these. It says, in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living beings covered with eyes in the front and in the back. Um, and these four uh, living beings had a significant role. Okay, and it says the first living creature was like a lion. And we know our Savior, and it talks about him being the lion of Judah. And then the second living was like a calf or an ox. The third creature was like the face of man. And the fourth creature was like an eagle. So we deal with the, these four living beings are a representation of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, the four great apostles, Matthew being a representation of man because we it goes through the um, the genealogy of Jesus and how he came about into the earth. Um, Mark dealing with the lion, Luke dealing with the ox, 
and John dealing with the ego. Um, and then the four great apostles, which they have in my studies, I find that was Peter, James, Matthew, and Paul. Peter being the lion, James being the ox, and Matthew being the man, and then Paul being the eagle. These are just some of the things I found in my study. It's probably other things that I will run across as I get back into um, my study. But these are these four living beings, and they were around the altar with the 24 elders. And it says here, the four living creatures had six wings each. They were covered with their eyes all around. And so it kind of reminds you have to go back to the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, where the seraphims, they was worshiping God. Um, this is what this is Isaiah's call um, by the Lord, and it talks about the year that King Uzziah died. He sees worship taking place, and these seraphims are worshiping. They cover his eyes, two to fly, two covered their feet, and two covered the eyes. And that was just out of reverence. They worshiped the Lord um, as they were in his presence. And so we see the same thing that's taking place here. They're reverencing um, God, and they're honoring him. And it says, all day and night without ceasing, they were saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and still to come. So that their assignment was to worship the Lord all night long. This was, this was their assignment to worship him all day and all night. And they, and, and they sung, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So as these living beings that was assigned to worship God, we also or called and assigned and a commandment to worship the Lord thy God. And he's the only one that we will worship and adore. So as we go through this, don't get so caught up in, I'm trying to break down a lot of what the 24 elders, and, and it's more to the 24 elders. I just couldn't write everything down. Um, but then also with the four uh, living beings, you know, as we go, we're going to see this come back up, and, I, and I'll break down and add more things to it as we go. But it says here in verse 9, when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, O God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and by by your will, they exist and were created. And so even Colossians 1, first chapter, verse 15, 16, talks about that all things that were created by Jesus. Jesus is the word. And when God spoke, the word went forth, and all things were created, visible and invisible. But when we deal with the one part I didn't um, bring out was, was the eyes that was before, uh, before the four elders and behind deals with full of eyes. And those eyes represent wisdom, represent power, represent creation and omniscience, okay, all-knowing. So they had this gifting of, of wisdom, power, omniscience, and, cre and, and creation. They had this ability. This is with the all eyes. They were able to see all things. As you know, the one scripture that I, I love quoting now is, I think it's Proverbs 15 and 3, that the eyes of the Lord beholds everywhere, beholding good and evil. And so we're going to stop there on this afternoon. Um, if you have any questions about um, chapters 1 and 4, anything I may not have brought out, any questions you have, um, please feel free to ask. Um, like I said, it's, it's so much that I found in my studies. I could not write everything down, but I wrote what I believe that would be important and to make sure that you at least got the understanding of the scripture and the text and what was being, uh, what John saw, what was being unveiled, or what was being revealed. And so, I will do a light review of chapter 1 to 4 on next week, just in case I may have missed some things. Um, I know a couple of things I um, did not fully bring out, and I will try to bring those things out on next week. But then also, we're going to go into chapter 5 and chapter 6. So, I'm encouraging those who are watching, listen, to, to study up, to go through chapter 1 and chapter 4 again. I'm going to go through it again and try to bring out some more points. But then also, um, let's study chapter 5 and chapter 6. Um, and, um, and if any questions that you may have on that, 
we will deal with those on next week. So listen, God bless you. We are, um, like I said, in a new time, new season. Um, so we will not have uh, Thursday Bible study. We're just going to have one Bible study, which is on Tuesdays at 530. We will have our normal worship service on Sunday at 1030. We will still pray afterwards, after um, our Bible study on Tuesdays. And then we'll go downtown on Thursdays from 6 to about 7.30 as we go down there. So we will have these things in place. And then as we, as the months go on, we'll be incorporating um, back our Saturday prayer. Depending upon how the times are going, we will incorporate those things um, back as time go on. So listen, God bless you. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I will try to address those questions um, after um, the study. And um, I pray that you got something out of our study on today. Let's continue to dig. I'm digging. I'm growing. You continue to dig and grow with me. And let's let, let's see what the Lord is saying in this time for us. Um, I'm praying that um, your discernment heightens. I pray that it increases. I pray that you stay consecrated in the season um, as God uh, reveals and unveils uh, the things that he wants you to see and know. Once again, I thank you for your time. Be blessed, and we will see you on Sunday. God bless you.